on the series that we have launched with the A-listers of the event and experiential industry, we have a very well-known name who needs no introduction, Ms. Gitika uh, Ganjudhar. She is the author, MC, and actor. Um, and we have a set of questions uh, for you, Gitika. Thanks for joining us today. Namaste, Rohel. And first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, on this uh, chat with you. Thank you very, very much. It's so very kind of you to call me an age sister. It's all those very glorious uh, sentences that you used to describe me. I don't think I deserve any of those. And I, when you were introducing me and when you said that uh, someone who needs no introduction, I kind of giggled within my mind and said that that's the line we use when we have a uh, you're, being, you're, being very humble. <laughs> you're being very humble, honestly, and down to earth. Uh, I want to start with my first question about, you know, the state of our industry, you know, we say things have come back. Of course, uh, events are happening, but there is this larger fear lurking around, you know, of things may go wrong. What is the sentiment right now? How are you, how are you reading the sentiment of the industry? I think it's not very advisable for us to read sentiment. What is more important is to focus on the ground reality and from what we're reading and what we're hearing uh there will be many more ups and downs in the coming years uh, for the world in general and to every industry uh, practically so we're not the only ones who are going to be traveling those ups and downs however we are one of the most worst tech industries across the world I think we need to keep our seat belts on for the next <laughs> two years. And right. uh, when when you go through ups and downs, there's only one thing that needs to come out of it, and that is lessons learned and solutions or implemented and new paths taken. So as an industry, as a community, we have to be ready for ups and downs, changes, a lot of flux, a lot of uh, re engineering right. and i think in the end of it we will talk we will be when we talk finally it will be a brand new uh, brand new day this is all happening uh, for the better i think mm -hmm. i feel uh, that's the way i look at it uh, as i said keep your seat belts on and and do your best and be very very wise uh, be good be fair and work hard no, absolutely. I think we, we just cannot let, uh, you know, take it so easy because we have dealt with it and, you know, we have suffered, all of us, you know, the entire sector, the entire industry has uh, suffered. You know, me, you're making news for uh, Lal Singh Chadda and, and recently we spoke about it. How did that happen? And, I mean, give us a story, I mean, the, the backstory of this uh, thing. And we are really excited. Uh, I, I'm surely going to watch this film and watch, uh, you know, uh, your role in this. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a very sweet uh, tale. Um, two years, two years, more than two years back, I think. I, I was sitting on my study table in my study and I was, I was writing something. I remember, and I got a call that said that, that we'd like you from Mukesh uh, Chabra's uh, casting um, agency. That said, uh, we'd like you to come in uh, to do a screen test without any makeup, just wear a simple little balcony and come in and give this screen test. And it's a scene where you're performing with uh, our maker, Han. And I was like, really? <laughs> so when was the last time I even sort of sent a message or even went in and spoke with, uh, you know, the agency and all of a sudden, you know, it just came out of the blue rail, really. It, it's not something I even worked that much towards. I went in and I did as I was told. And I remember giving the audition with, uh, it just happened on its own organically, something that was destined, I think. And I think I, I just gave a very, very honest uh, performance in the audition. And I, I came back home really and I, for, I just made myself forget about it. I said, sure, no, like an idea, yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. And after the silence of a few weeks, I get another call. There's no call in the middle. I get another call saying, uh, you've been chosen for the role. Can you please oh. come and sign, uh, you know, whatever the formality, formality the documents are. And this is when we will start shooting and we need to get your hair and this thing, etc, etc. 
and I put the phone down. And I remember uh, I wanted to get up and you know uh, sort of let out a happy cry, but I, <laughs> I just sat in my place. I said, "Let this happen. Let this happen. That the moment of happy cry will come later." So that's how it really happened. Um, yes, you should go and watch. Everybody should go and watch the film, and not not for me because uh, I am just a part of the film. But watch it because it's, it's one. It's an Amit Khan production uh, film. Uh, the entire team, the crew, everyone has worked very, very hard for more than two years through the COVID pandemic, and uh, it, it's just a very, very. Um, it'll touch your hearts. You will enjoy the filmic experience, and Amir uh, has done a stupendous job as the lead uh, protagonist. And so has Karina. So, right. yeah, I think Tedda coming to your table. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, I have to ask you one more question related to the film. Um, <laughs> about working with amir khan you know everyone has this you know thing that he is a perfectionist that's what we hear i remember back in the days when i used to cover entertainment you know that was the impression you know uh, give me a sense of i mean what was it uh, like you know sharing sets with him see you know rohel i have and i'm not just saying this my you know this is absolutely the truth in 11th and 12th standard when qsqt had just been released I am not saying I am a type of people who are from the new generation. Mm. Uh, the right. music has gone bonkers over Amir Khan, and I remember me and a very close friend of mine, we we were in uh, Dobra Lines in Meerut, and uh, uh, the boys of the school got nowhere with us because both of us were deeply madly in love with Amir Khan, and we wanted to marry him. And we sort of you know mm. went forward and grew up. I was an insanely crazy Amir Khan fan. I remember having a wall in my study which was. From top to bottom, that's where right, full of his posters and his photographs. Uh, back from there, you know, our life journey happened, and suddenly, uh, you know, after so many years, maybe two decades, I might find myself on a film set, uh, acting with him uh, on a film being produced by him. And um, I'm inherently a very confident person. Uh, all I did was I just told myself, just go in there, just don't get rattled uh, by his presence. Uh, and that presence, that his presence doesn't do you. Um, doesn't rattle you. He doesn't come in like a a star, and he doesn't intimidate you. He comes in as an artist. He does a good job. He helps you, suggests how you can do a good job, a better job. Um, very, very chilled out uh, man in that sense. So shooting with him was. I kept telling myself, you know, just take this in because here is a filmic legend that you're shooting with. And I took it in. I it's very precious. Uh, but having said that, I I wasn't uh, jumping, you know, with excitement or anything like that because that's not what he would have wanted, and that's not also how I am. So very very precious experience. Uh, I'm so lucky that in my first film as, and in, in my debut film, I had him and such a stellar cast uh, that I worked with on the film. Um, so we what we saw in COVID, uh, you know. Uh, hybrid events, online events, and now physical events. That means a lot of MCs had to adapt. You know, hosts had to adapt. Give me a sense of how has this role uh, kind of you know shaped up? The role of an MC shaped up. If we look at the last two years, has it actually become more challenging or easier? How do you read that? So, see, Rohi, it, it's just it's logical, right? If you have an industry that is changing, then everything that is a part of that industry is bound to change. And uh, the pandemic, I feel, did come in and change a lot of things for the better. So, but one of the few things that I think has really, really changed about the role of an MC is that. Um, so, Rohi, it's very, very logical, right? Uh, if the industry changes, then Everything that's a part of the industry, every vertical, every element, is bound to undergo change to align itself with the larger change that's happened. Of course, the the simplest change that has happened is that now MCs have had to upskill themselves to handle virtual events and hybrid. So there are some MCs who do very well in virtual events. There are others who are, um, you know, uh, better skills to handle the hybrid uh, version. And then there are others who can only do live very well. And then there are some very few, I think, now. Who can do all the three with equal elan? But still, I feel now MCs more than ever need to find their niche, and they need to, you know, create a stronghold for themselves in the niche that 
uh, they are identifying for themselves and also what the market is sending their way in terms of messages to the kind of work that is coming uh, their way. So one of that is very, very basic change that, that's happening. Um, then there is a whole category, a whole bunch that are also influencers on social media. But I think that 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 little wave that came, it's already gone because the market has uh, realigned itself again very quickly and realized that an MC is an MC is an MC. And if the event needs uh, a professional coming in and do, doing their job, and if the professional is not an influencer, it doesn't really matter. We're still going to go in and have a professional MC coming into the job. That's the wave that came and went. But still, there is a, a certain very small percentage where uh, influencers come MCs or celebrities come MCs will still be hired. But I feel that's really a trend on its way out from him. Another three years, four years, I don't see that happening uh, beyond that. Okay. Now, the third change that I feel that has really come about in a very big way is that as an MC on stage, as an anchor on stage, or again, looking into a, a, a camera, or a screen, you have to be very real. Okay, uh, you can have your drama, you can have your performance, you can have a lot of other elements. In fact, but one thing that you now will have to do if you really want to get into the gold league of MC the first world, you will have to know how to engage from here. It has to be real, and for it right. to be real, you need to be somebody who's uh, a calm person, a well-informed person, a good human being, someone who delves deep into the brand, deep into the event, who takes on the event like a partner, who feels for uh, for the event, uh, feels for the subject. Even more than before now, professionals who bring all of this in are going to be valued and put into a league that will be the topmost goal league. Real. When I'm talking to you, know, Rohail, I'm here. Mm. I'm talking to you, and every word that's coming out is coming out from here. It's, I'm very, I'm connected. So, if I'm coming across as fake, then I would be surprised. But since I'm not taking any single sentence that I'm sharing with you here, I think it's very real. So you have to be very, very real as uh, as MCs because MCs are those humans that are stringing the entire event together. They're giving it the look and feel. They're the human vibe uh, in the event. And more and more with this new generation, at least, the human vibe itself is becoming very real. Right, right. I think that, right. that is really going to be uh, the biggest change. And as I said, stay at your niches. Be ready for the onslaught of uh, uh, <laughs> computer-generated MCs. I'm telling you it's going to happen in the next three, four years. We're going to be also replaced on some challenging events by computer-generated MCs. Right. All of that coming in the future. So, yeah, I'm that Absolutely. You know, also, you know, uh, a lot of MCs would be watching this uh, episode, and I, I want you to, what is your advice to them? You know, a lot of youngsters coming, uh, having these, you know, dreams of becoming a host and MC. Uh, what, what would you like to tell them, you know, when, when they want to make a career out of it, when they are keen to get into this industry? What is your advice? My advice has been the same on some fronts for the last two decades now. I've always told everyone that, you know, if they want to. to. Actually, you know, really, like, I, I, I often ask myself, this and I'm asking you this, who am I to really give anybody advice? But all of us love giving advice, so I'll not pretend that I don't love giving this advice and go ahead and give it. Of so course, I mean, very hard. Uh, I mean, my personal experience, you know, uh, they refer to you and they always, you know, talk about you and they want to be like you. I, that, that's what I have, you know, that's my experience. Yeah. That's just, uh, it's just something, some magic that the universe has created. <laughs> I don't know how steep it is in reality, really. But I uh, I value I value all their love and affection. Really, it's very special. So, um, top advice would be work on the core of your your job. Work on the craft. Work on your voice, your voice modulation. Work on uh, whether your uh, you know your body is fit and presentable. Not not I'm not saying you've got to look like a goddess or a god, but fit and presentable. Work on what are you saying on stage. That if you say even five lines. 
they should leave a memory, leave an impact. They should convey the message in the most memorable, impactful manner. And if that's not required, you're not required to be impactful, memorable, then do exactly that. Work on your content or get someone to come in and work on the content for you. And then comes everything else. This is, uh, it's not an easy uh, career, no? MC. It, it mm -hmm. takes a while for people to sort of start getting regular business. So now don't lose your patience and definitely go out there and ask people who are more experienced that, am I really going to be able to do this? Because there are times when I have gotten mails uh, uh, from people who want to be MC from different parts of the country. And I've been very, very honest and I uh, maybe also hurtful. Uh, by telling them that it's not, they don't have what it really, really takes, you know, to, to be an MC. Better to sort of do that check also about yourself. Um, and then um, just be a partner for for the agency. You know, don't come in there and create more issues for them or more jobs for them or more things for them to handle. Come in there, it's like your event. You're, if you're getting paid well, come in there, join in, ensure the delivery of a great, great Event. So these are the few basic advices that I would um, give. And uh, well, if you're looking at a short-term career, five years, six years, eight years, ten years, uh, without really going about it very, very uh, truthfully, you'll last. But ten years max, if you're not doing this the way it needs to be done, uh, you'll be you'll be moved out of the pie, and somebody else will come in and take your place. So if you're looking at a ten-year career, go. <laughs> Enjoy longer career, lifetime career, detailing. God is in the details. Absolutely, absolutely. I have two more questions. One is on the work front, uh, what all is lined up? You know, uh, uh, do we see you in more films? Uh, what all is coming and what is happening on the event? I hope so. I hope to be seen in uh, more films, probably on dramas, on OTC. Uh, more importantly, uh, my books should be out next year, the ones that I've offered. And uh, my journey as a communication coach is anyway on. I'm also 100% next year launching my career as a speaker. And that is what I'm immensely excited about now. Immensely excited. I have so much now here that I know I can, I can share and help change the life for the better and uh, just spread happiness, spread transformation, spread um, right knowledge about very important things in life. That's something that's coming on next year that should delight a lot of people out there. Uh, and as for my career as an MC, it's a well-oiled machine. Uh, I've always said I'll do it till I stand and or until all of you call me in to Execute. So yeah, work front is it's gonna be exciting next year. And I'm finally excited about something new. <laughs> no, that that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I think uh, uh, that that is the next big thing, you know. Uh, uh, and we all would love to see, you know, uh, the progression to that. My final question is about the industry at large, the event industry, and our, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, poster boys, girls women uh, somewhere you know we're still uh, as an industry maybe very fragmented you know if i may say you know in what way? Uh, that's my observation you know in what uh, way uh, for example you know uh, we don't maybe you know uh, cohesive you know there's need to be more cohesive in the way we uh, address our recognition for example as an industry body raise our issues together when people lost their jobs you know we we mean we're trying to do things but we couldn't you know come together in a way that was expected of us uh, what is what would you like to tell the industry leaders overall and uh, as an industry insider yourself you know where do you see this industry um, when you look within what comes to your mind first of all rohel i think it's time and especially in the in the year that we live in, which is like what, 2022. Um, industry leader as such is, is a term that I don't really, uh, everybody's a leader. If you're out there and making a change that needs to be made, for me, you're a leader. 
it doesn't necessarily have to be that you put in so many years or you're heading a very big agency or you're doing very well as an anchor and you're respected. No, 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 no. Anybody out there who's making that change first is a leader. You're right. We did not come together as an industry and we have some very, very, very uh, uh, basic problems and issues that we need to address. But you know what? Let's be kind to ourselves. Before COVID, we were we were flourishing as a trade, right? And at that point in time, we didn't get back ready because we were so busy, you know, making money uh, and, and growing. And then suddenly we have this challenge and we are not battle ready. And in the middle of the challenge, what are people going to do? What are artists going to do? What are agencies going to do? What are vendor partners going to do? They're going to try and make an earning. Jesse Okay. A handful of people did come together, did try and talk to the government, did try and talk to, you know, regulatory bodies. I don't think the time was conducive for any major policy decisions to be taken uh, for us. Uh, the time will be conducive in the future when we will come back as a mightier uh, industry and then our voice will be, uh, you know, mightier and we will be talking to the right people in the government. Changes will then happen. Right now, I think we should more look at uh, how as an industry we can get back on our feet every individual, every agency, every vendor partner, get back on their feet. And while we're doing this, you know, Ray, more than really uh, what we want as an industry from the government or from ecosystem, I think we should look at what we are giving to the ecosystem. So there is this very, very important uh, uh, subject, and you know that it's very close to my heart uh, uh, as of now and close to the heart of many, many people in the industry is about whether our industry is really going the sustainable way. So I, I would like to talk about that if you want to ask me about that. So right now, let's just get our house in order and then, then go for the, for the rest. Because I don't think the situation even in the country at large or in the government or it's not conducive. It's just not conducive. That's the way it is. That's the reality. They're not going to right now focus on our issues. Uh, thank you for you know uh, joining us. Before I uh, kind of uh, ask you my final question, this is my uh, one of my favorite questions about you know this this whole thing about sustainability hmm. and one you know hmm. and industry the events you know uh, event organizations you know I think they can champion this cause because they are at the forefront of a lot of such issues. Hmm. How do you think, you know, our industry can contribute uh, towards sustainability, uh, towards this concept of, you know, making, become, becoming more environment friendly? So, uh, the last question that you asked me before this one was about what are we getting? What are we doing? Uh, what, what, what is the country doing for us? This is something we need to do for the country, and this is something we need to do for the world. We need to do for the generations coming on. Uh, sustainability, as such, uh, Ruhel, and you know this, uh, is a very loosely used, used term. If I get very specific, the United Nations it, it describes sustainability having three pillars social, governance, and environment. So, we as an industry make a lot of impact on social and the environment aspects of sustainability. Um, you know, for example, Rohail, an on-ground event, a live event, generates about 530 metric tons of one CO2. So it has thousands of tens. Can you imagine the bulk of that? And if you think that virtual events don't generate, uh, you know, waste, a virtual event with 100 attendees that is happening from morning to evening across, um, you know, a day, somewhere generates consumes the amount of energy that you would do so when you're driving car for 3,300 miles. We're leaving, we're leaving a very, very uh, large footprint on our environment. We are one of the industries across the world that leaves, a, that gives out a lot of waste that cannot be regenerated. It's our foremost duty to come together and address this, and this can only happen if our voice which is the client, the client, the paymasters are ready to put in the extra money or ready to work with agencies across India to put their mind, come up with solutions that are more environment friendly, uh, more social friendly, because uh, 
this is the time to do that really. while we're also mending the house in many other ways let's also try and mend it it's a, it's a far cry it's a very difficult thing we all are struggling with budgets the clients you know they don't want to spend extra money all of that has been done somewhere this movement will have to make a small beginning and through collaboration it will catch pace it will catch pace over the next many years but i think sustainability right. for the event industry in india we should lead this across asia we should lead this across europe we will be so proud of ourselves in two years and this is my final last question when you look back at your journey how would you sum up it how do you sum it up you know uh, for yourself <laughs> I look back and I say, "Yeah, how did it happen?" You know, this was my first thought. I didn't know. You know, so every five years I would look back and say, "Abhi to khatam, 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 khatam." Because I had always heard that shelf life five years, shelf life ten years, shelf life fifteen years, shelf life twenty years. Abhi to my career, I can go on till I'm alive. If if they still want me around, uh, no, no. I look back with uh, a lot of delight, a lot of gratitude. uh so so lovely so lucky so many blessings kitna pyar kitni izzat and all i did was go in there and i just worked hard every day you know i i i didn't have like the greatest strategy i didn't have like some you know uh, earth shattering vision i didn't even have a plan i just went in there and i just worked very honestly i worked very hard and um, i think mas saraswati has been very very kind to me Madam, right. I'm thankful. Yeah, I have so much gratitude to all of you. You also, you know, everything experiences, the W applause, all the recognition. Did you have me here as the first guest? I mean, really? I mean, of course. I mean, those I mean, work hard. I mean, who have, uh, as you said, you know, connect between the heart and the, you know, what the thoughts they have. I think it happens to them. The universe plays its so, part, and that yeah. is how it is. But lovely, uh, Gitika. Thanks for joining us on this. Uh, Thank first you for second. having me, Rohit. Thank you so much. And, I have a very really special connect with you. I have to tell everybody because you are from my uh, land of Kashmir. And, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> so jab, yes. there's a jab. Message, message. I'm like, lose. That's it. I have to respond. I have to go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us.